So I've just realized, I've reviewed the iPhone XS, the iPhone XS Max, the Note 9, the Pixel 3, the Surface Pro 6, the Surface Laptop 2, and a ton more devices in 2018, except for literally the device that I use for 12 hours or sometimes way more than that every single day. And that is my main device, my 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro. So here's my full review of the 2018 MacBook Pro, the Vega 20 i9 model as well, and everything you need to know about the 560X benchmarks, everything after basically six months of use. Quick story time with Daniel. So I got my first actual Mac back in 2011 when my mom bought me a 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro as a present for successfully passing my baccalaureate exam with a fairly decent score of 96% and getting accepted into the Uni of Manchester uh, in order to study computer systems engineering. So that was the present for that. And before that, I had two Hackintoshes, but I've never had, you know, a real, a genuine Apple Mac. So when I got my 2011 13 inch MacBook Pro, that was the best laptop I've ever had by, by far. So it looked so, so premium compared to my Sony Vaio FW21e that I had before, and it was a brilliant, brilliant tool to use. I've shortly upgraded the hard drive to an SSD and bumped the RAM to eight gigabytes. I actually made a full video on that quite some time ago. That was actually my, my most in-depth video back in the day. Uh, but yeah, this was this was the laptop that I've started Zen of Tech from, by the way, fun fact. And then in 2013, I managed to save a bit of money and I got the 2013 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro, which was and still is actually the device that impressed me the most when, when I first got it. It had the first Retina display on any laptop. You couldn't see any pixels on that thing. It was crazy, crazy thin compared to the previous generation. Then it had full flash storage. So everything that you did was basically in an instant. It had a quad-core i7 processor from the dual core i5 that I had before in my previous MacBook Pro and it also had a dedicated GPU, the NVIDIA 750M. So yeah, this was actually the last generation of MacBook Pros that used NVIDIA GPUs. So yeah, it was a massive upgrade in every single way and honestly, no device out of the hundreds of devices that I've tested over the years has managed to impress me and recreate that feeling that I got when I, you know, first put my hands on, on this new MacBook Pro. It was such a big improvement over the previous generation. The only device that comes close to that feeling is the DJI Mavic Pro my first drone. So when I got my 2016 MacBook Pro, uh, I only got it because I managed to spill a glass of water on my 2013 model. I damaged the display because I was awake for like 38 hours and working. Yeah, not my best decision, but I was quite disappointed in the 2016 model, honestly. I mean, yes, it looked great, but apart from the looks, there was literally nothing to it. Export times were actually longer than on my 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro, and I've had so, so many issues with that model. Popping noise issues, GPU issues, the speakers actually failed on me twice the keyboard broke i mean the spacebar stopped working and a few other keys as well it was and i'm not even joking or exaggerating it was the worst experience i've ever had with any product and i've used a lot of them and after being on the phone with apple care uh, for months and after two failed attempts repair attempts apple finally gave me the 2017 model after almost an entire year of me you know complaining and com experiencing those issues so yeah not the best customer experience either Luckily, the 2017 model was perfect. I've actually had zero issues with that. But then in July 2018, Apple silently released the new 2018 MacBook Pros without any event or anything. It just randomly appeared on our website and it actually turned out to be a significant upgrade over the 2017 and 2016 models. It came with an i9 6-core processor from the i7 quad-core that we got before. It came with 32 gigabytes of RAM for the first time in a MacBook, the Radeon 560X GPU over the 560, a true tone display, an improved keyboard, as well as up to 4 terabytes of 3.2 gigabytes per second flash storage, the T2 processor. So yeah, this thing was a huge upgrade in every single way from the 2017 model. So I got it to review it and the plan was to just return it after my review was done. But honestly, the performance improvements were so good, so big, and the keyboard was noticeably better than my 2017 model, which meant that I could write my scripts, these scripts for videos like this much faster. So to my surprise, I actually ended up keeping this thing. So what are my overall thoughts after almost six months of using this thing? Well, like I said, the keyboard itself is actually quite a big improvement. I type a lot on my MacBook Pro, and before with the 2017 model, I was actually forced to use an external keyboard. But with this one, I can comfortably type fast enough without making a considerable amount of errors, spelling errors from the MacBook Pro's keyboard. And that's because Apple added a tiny wrap around the keys uh, to protect them from any dust and debris that could get inside the switches, which also makes the keys a bit quieter than before, but definitely much more tactile than before because, you know, there's more travel, key travel, thanks to the added wraps.
then the speakers are also so, so much better than they were before. I mean, even before, they were already great on the 15 and 2017 model, but now they have even more bass and they're also louder than on the 2017 models. Then the display, like I said, now has True Tone, meaning that it would automatically adjust the color temperature of the display in order to match the lighting in your room. And honestly, guys, I do love it. I do love it a lot. So it makes reading and writing so much easier on the eyes. And what's pretty cool about this is that it also works on the touch bar as well as with the LG Ultrafine 5K and 4K monitors, as long as you know you keep the MacBook Pro's lid open. Now, the only issue that I have with True Tone, and it's actually quite a big one, really, is that if you do any video editing or photo editing, it would not automatically turn itself off. Not even in first party apps such as iMovie or Final Cut Pro, which means that you would need to constantly remind yourself to dig through the settings app and disable it every single time you want to edit an image or a video because otherwise your whole color temperature would be messed up. Apple, please at least add a shortcut on the touch bar to do this. Okay, so now let's talk about the performance. So aside from the two extra cores and actually four extra threads that we get with the 2018 models, we also get 32 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz DDR4 memory. So even faster than the LP DDR3 memory that we got uh, with the 2017 models, that those were 2133 megahertz. We also get the 560X GPU, which is about 10 to 15% faster than the 560 that was in the 2017 model. So the main improvement here, as you can probably tell, is in terms of the CPU, and the RAM. Now, just three months after Apple released the massive improvement that the 2018 MacBook Pros were, they decided to release one more update. And that was the additional GPU option that was the Vega 16 and the Vega 20 options uh, for the 15 inch MacBook Pros. And honestly, guys, this broke my heart. And not just mine, but everyone else's who bought a maxed out 2018 model just like a month or so before. That's because the Vega 20 models especially are finally a massive improvement over even the 560X that, like I said, got we got just a few weeks before. I mean, Apple could have at least said that, oh, we are going to release a major GPU option a few months later, or at least release the 2018 models in November rather than like July. Uh, but nope, they kept it silent and screwed over literally everyone who bought a 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro. I mean, I've spoken to Apple multiple times. I've spoken to managers as well. Apple did let some people upgrade to Vega models, by the way, but not me. Anyway, so I had to get the Vega 20 model as well, just to, you know, do a few benchmarks, test it out, and tell you guys how it is, if it's actually that good. And here's how the 2017 model compares to the 2018 560X and the 2018 Vega 20. Starting off with some CPU benchmarks, in Geekbench 4 single core, the 2017 model got 4,742, 5,608 for the 2018 model, 560X, and then 5,698 for the Vega 20. So quite a bit better, uh, the Vega 20, even though it has the exact same processor as the 560X. Now in Geekbench 4 multi-core, we got 15,829 on the 2017 model, 23,795 on the 2018 560X, and then 25,086 on the Vega 20. Interesting. In the Cinebench R15, we got 689 on the 2017 model, 1013 on the 2018 i9 560X, and then 1073 on the i9 2018 Vega 20. Now, in terms of the disk read speed test, uh, we got with the 2017 model 2504 megabytes per second in terms of the read performance, 3106 megabytes per second on the 560X, and then 3081 megabytes per second for the Vega 20. Now, in terms of the write performance, the 2017 model got 1005. 587 megabytes per second, 2018 one got 3,004, basically double, and 2018 Vega 20 got 2,987. So what about, you know, 3D modeling and rendering? So for example, in Keyshot 8, the 2017 model rendered the scene in 8 minutes and 39 seconds, 2018 560X in 5 minutes and 50 seconds, and then 2018 Vega 20 in 5 minutes and 36 seconds. So even though I've done these tests multiple times, it seems like the 2018 Vega 20 is more powerful CPU-wise than the 2018 560X, which is weird because they have literally the exact same CPU, the GPU is the only difference. Um, now, this is actually because Apple has slightly redesigned the internals. So there you go, I took the back covers off of both of these MacBook Pros, and you can see how much bigger the GPU is on the Vega 20 models. So the GPU memory on the Vega 20 is now inside the GPU itself. You know, this is why AMD's memory is called HBM2 memory. Uh, that's coming from their second generation of high bandwidth memory. And the only way that they can achieve faster performance than the standard GDR5 memory is by the memory itself being placed inside the GPU rather than on the board outside 
side like we have on the 560X model. Okay, but how does this affect CPU performance? It doesn't make sense. Well, the Vega 20 can also achieve uh, more performance per watt than the 560X, which in return means that the wattage can be lowered and therefore the GPU temperatures can be lowered as well, which means that in return, the CPU has more room to breathe because Apple is actually using a unified cooling system for both the CPU and the GPU. There we go. So that's why. So that was the CPU. Now let's test out the GPU performance. So uh, in terms of Cinebench R15, the 2017 560 model got 86 frames per second. The 2018 560X got 106 frames per second, quite a big improvement. And the Vega 20 got 111. That is not as big of an improvement as I expected. So what about something even more demanding such as the Heaven benchmark? So in this one, the 2017 model 560 got 19 frames per second, quite low. The 2018 560X got 21. So yeah, just 20, 20 frames higher. But then the Vega 20 actually got 38 frames per second, almost double of what the 560X model got. Moving on to video editing, here in Final Cut Pro 10, we have the MacBook Air 2018, the full review, which is a 15 minute 4K project, and the 2017 i7 560 MacBook Pro finished its export in 13 minutes and 51 seconds, which is pretty good, uh, better than one to one, to be honest. The 2018 MacBook Pro i9 with the 560X finished this in 11 minutes and 48 seconds, which is 14% faster than the 560 2017, while the 2018 Vega 20 finished this in 10 minutes and 51 seconds, so 8% faster than the 2018 560X or 22% faster than the 2017 model. Moving on to a few games, StarCraft 2, which is still one of my favorite games, uh, I haven't played it in quite a while, but in StarCraft 2, the 2017 model, 560 got 35 frames per second, this was in uh, native resolution, all the settings were on high, uh, the 2018 model, 560X got 39 frames per second, so 4 frames per second higher, however, the Vega 20 got 78, 78, a massive improvement, wow. So now let's try Fortnite. So again, same settings as before, 2880 by 1800 resolution, and everything was set to high. So 2017 model, 560 got 16 frames per second, 2018 560X model got 19 as the average, and 2018 Vega 20 got 28. Okay, that's a pretty big improvement. So CPU-wise, you do get a small improvement in terms of the Vega 20 and the 560X, but GPU-wise, you get almost a two times increase in performance. So yeah, if you're into gaming, then this is going to be a huge improvement compared to, like I said, even the 560X model. Uh, if you're into video editing, then the, the improvement is just about 10% on the Vega 20 compared to the 560X. And finally, the last big thing that I wanna cover is the famous T2 processor. So this is something that Apple added initially to the 2017 iMac Pro and then to all the new Macs released afterwards. The 2018 MacBook Pros come with a T2 chip, the 2018 MacBook Airs also come with a T2 chip and the new Mac Mini. And what I've done is that this is basically an ARM-based processor. It's actually very similar to Apple's A10 chip that's inside your iPhone 7, and it handles all the background system processes, such as the system boot sequence, the microphones, the camera processing, even the disk encryption. So this is why, this is the reason why we got double the write speeds on the 2018 MacBook Pro versus the 2017 model when using Firevault. So the good news is that the T2 lifts a lot of the lighter workloads from the main Intel processor, you know, allowing it to perform faster in return. And what Apple did is honestly remarkable. So, you know, they have devices that run on both the x86-64 platform as well as the ARM platform. This is something that's actually even more difficult to do than a MacBook running just on an ARM processor, such as Apple's A12 or so processors. Um, and because of this, every Mac with a T2 processor, the bad news is that it will crash a lot. So my 2018 MacBook Pros, for example, they crashed close to 40 times already. And yes, I did. I actually lost some work in the process, so it's been a nightmare, to be honest. And I've had T2 crashes with the Vega 20 MacBook Pro as well, uh, the Mac Minis, two Mac Minis actually, the MacBook Air, basically all of, all of the T2 devices that I've had, all of them crashed. So yeah, unfortunately, even though Apple's T2 processor is supposed to make your MacBook more secure, which it does, it also has a negative impact on the usability just because of how often it crashes your system. And speaking of security and privacy, here's something that I've actually discovered recently, and it's actually a really, really cool thing to have. So it's an app called, well, Privacy. And what it does is that it links to your bank account and it generates a virtual card number whenever you're making an online payment in order to protect your actual card. And it's not just that, but you can also create multiple virtual credit cards, one for each merchant, for example, which provides you with even more security because you can delete and freeze your virtual cards whenever you wish. So for example, you can create 
payment limits, which is pretty cool. So that if your streaming service subscription is $10 a month, for example, you can set a $10 limit with that subscription service, which means that they would not be able to bill you twice or upgrade your plan without your permission. So it's the perfect thing for signing up for free trials because you can delete a virtual card afterwards and you know that you'll never be charged. Privacy works on both your smartphone as well as your computer via the privacy browser extension. And the best part about it is that it's actually completely free. Yes, there's no in-app purchases, no memberships, literally nothing to pay. So it's entirely free to use. So simply sign up using the link in the description. And thanks again to Privacy for being a sponsor of this video. Okay, so in the end, I do love my 2018 15-inch i9 560X MacBook Pro. It's, it's by far the best Mac that I've ever used. And even though it's far from perfect with all the T2 crashes that I've had, it's still an amazing device overall. You know, I'm also using Thunderbolt 3 to its full potential. I'm connected directly to my server, my Mac mini, my 5K monitor, as well as sometimes my Vega 64 eGPU as well. And in terms of the Vega 20 model, personally, I'm not keeping it because, you know, it's, it's crazy expensive and it's not worth it uh, for me personally. But if you buy it, you know, right now, a brand new Mac Pro, then definitely get a Vega 20 model from the 560X, especially if you're into gaming, because it's it's an amazing GPU ha to have for that. And when it comes to content creation, even the 560X is still really good for that. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully you all enjoyed my full six month review of the 2018 MacBook Pro's 15 inch models. Definitely subscribe to notifications if you're new to the channel and you wanna see more in-depth reviews and in-depth tech videos like this one. Hopefully you've all enjoyed the full video and made it until the end. Let me know in the comments if you've also made it until the end and what do you guys think about the 2018 15 inch MacBook Pros. Check out the 13 inch MacBook Pro review here, uh, 2018. And yeah, this has been pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. And oh, yeah, also subscribe notifications if you're new to the channel, tell the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a brand new video comes out. But yeah, this has been pretty much it. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Zenotech, signing out. Cheers.